Hello, this is Nikhil, and today I'll be talking about my paper on generative echo chamber, the effects of LLM powered search systems on diverse information seeking. This is a joint effort by me and my co-authors Vera and Zhang. So before we start, it looks like I've, I've started with a jargon here. And to understand what I mean by generative echo chambers, we'll need to first look at what is an echo chamber. What is an echo chamber and why is it important to study? Well, an echo chamber is an environment where a person systematically encounters consonant over dissonant information. In other words, they are exposed to only the beliefs or opinions that coincide with their own so that their existing views are reinforced and alternative ideas, in other words, dissonant information is not considered. A direct consequence of echo chamber is opinion polarization, which is users moving further in the direction of their pre-existing attitude and away from the middle ground. Opinion polarization has, uh, has a lot of challenges as we can see. Opinion polarization hinders constructive communication between different parties. It widens the social and political gap, which in turn leads to mis uh, misinformation campaigns, civil unrest, promotion of destructive policies during elections, and in some cases, even war. So echo chamber has been a big challenge in information systems and it has been evolving as technology evolves. Let's find out how. So initially we had the good old newspapers and they were great, a huge milestone, but the, they were region bound and the audience was rather limited, leading to different views in different regions and a lack of global understanding. Another problem with this was that the power of power to shape the narrative was in control of these new uh, local newspaper uh, providers. And I've marked the uh, power of the narrative uh, with the uh, with the king sign. Next, uh, we had news broadcasting, which is uh, which had a much broader audience and coverage, but it faced with the same core challenges of newspapers. Uh, which is a region-based echo chamber and uh, the power of narrative still being in control of the news uh, broadcasting uh, provider. Next, uh, we had web search, which was sort of a breakthrough in my opinion. Now we had access to perspectives from all around the world at the tip of our fingertips and the power of narratives was now decentralized and shifted towards the users. But however, I mean, as you can see from the picture, I mean, not all issues were solved. Uh, users still had the preference to seek information that was aligning with their pre-existing views, which we call selective exposure. But we can see that we are making progress here, right? So now we are at a new frontier, LLM powered conversational search. Well, will this lead us to utopia or dystopia? Uh, and what even is so special about conversational search that I'm talking about this? Well, let's find out. So the first difference that we can see in this figure is that uh, the web search in the web search, we had a keyword based search, whereas in LLM powered conversational search, we used natural language. And next at number two, we can see that LLMs uh, foster conversational interactions where the model and the user both can issue uh, follow up questions, leading to the user being more expressive. Uh, during search sessions, which is uh, not present in the web search. Finally, at number three, we can see that in web search, we had we were interacting with the research results and web, websites directly. But in LLM powered conversation search, we are not exposed to the original sources. Instead, we are exposed to the summarized version of these documents. So now that we have a clear understanding of what makes these LLM powered search systems so special and unique, let's uh, let's see how echo chambers manifest in LLM powered conversational search. So now we'll be discussing our paper, which does a systematic study of echo chambers in conversational search. So we had two uh, research questions we wanted to tackle. One, is there a difference between web search systems and LLM powered conversational search systems? in the context of uh, selective exposure. Uh, and by selective exposure, again, I mean uh, uh, where uh, uh, the tendency for people consciously or unconsciously to seek out material that supports their existing attitudes. And the next thing that we also wanted to, uh, to see was how does it affect uh, opinion polarization? And for the second research question, uh, what, we, uh, what we saw, what we wanted to see was what is the effect for selective exposure and opinion polarization when these LLMs exhibit opinion bias, either consonant or dissonant with the user's existing attitude? 
So uh, let's dive into the study one, where we tackle the first research question. So for the, for the, for the first study, we had um, three conditions, the web search, which was our control, the LLM powered search and the LLM powered search with references. Now to implement our study, we created a, a closed world version of uh, versions of web search and conversational search systems to control the content. The curated retrieved uh, retrieval database included three topics. Uh, which we selected by three criteria. The first, that the topic should be controversial. Second, it should not be niche so that the general population, uh, you know, can have an opinion about it. And the third, that it should be complex enough and not necessarily familiar in everyday conversation so that participants can benefit from uh, the information seeking activity. So, and for our web search, we use the standard keyword based implementation with our results. Uh, being from our database and for our experimental conditions we use retrieval augmented generation and uh, which is a rag here and rag is a method that enhances these language models by allowing them to access and incorporate information from external data sources in our case the external data sources are closed world retrieval database which is uh, a common method uh, in LLM powered conversational search the details about this are uh, discussed in the paper so finally, the, the study design was a between subject study where the task was an information seeking task about a, a randomly assigned topic with the motivation to write an essay about it after the search task. After the search, the participants uh, had to read articles that both align and misalign with their pre-existing stance to measure their perception. And for our measurements, the, our first measure was information querying, where we measured the confirmatory query, which is percentage difference between participants queries that are consistent and inconsistent with their existing attitudes. For opinion polarization, we measured the difference between the attitude in the post-task uh, post survey and the pre-task survey. Next, uh, we have uh, confirmatory arguments, which is measured by the percentage difference of sentences in the final essay that are consistent and inconsistent with the participants existing attitude, which we captured in the pre-task survey. Uh, next, we had uh, confirmatory agreement, which is measured again by, uh, uh, by the participants agreement rating given to the consonant article minus that of the dissonant article shown in the post-task survey. Similarly, we had confirmatory trust, which is calculated again by uh, the participants rating of trust in the consonant article minus that of the dissonant article. And finally, we had extremeness, which is again measured in the same way. So uh, what were the results that we found? We found that, uh, you know, uh, we, we observed a higher uh, confirmatory querying in conversational search than web search and we also had a partial evidence for higher opinion polarization in conversational conversational search we can also uh, we can also uh, we also saw that uh, somehow shockingly that uh, you know showing references had little impact in fact we only saw 0.43 clicks per session that's that's uh, that's really low and uh, you know, so now it's clear that conversational search systems are more susceptible to selective exposure and opinion polarization. Um, I wonder what would happen when we make these LLMs opinionated. Well, let's find out. For our study two, we tackled our second research question about opinionated LLMs effect on selective exposure and opinion polarization. For the implementation of study two, we used retrieval augmented generation, where we manipulated the results of uh, we, where we manipulated the retrieved results and the prompts to achieve the desired opinion bias in the model's output. And uh, next, uh, because of uh, through these manipulations, we created three conditions: the neutral condition, which is the same as the experiment one, the consonant condition, where the model's bias is the same as the participant's bias, and the dissonant condition, where the model's bias is opposite uh, to that of the user. The task was similar to that of the study one, with, only, with the only change that we removed the web search condition and had a randomly assigned condition for the bias of the model. And we used the same measures as study one. Um, and for our results, we found that uh, consonant systems exhibited 
more confirmatory querying and higher opinion polarization compared to the web search and now you might be now you might be thinking right uh, can a dissonant system show an opposite trend and mitigate the effects of opinion polarization and confirmatory query maybe dissonant llm is the solution that we have been looking for well let's see what we have okay well it looks like the solution is not going to be as simple the dissonant condition condition is similar to that of the neutral condition so this diagram illustrates what we found uh, uh, found in our two studies so what we found was for the same user when the user goes through a web search uh, they experience a lower opinion polarization than when they go through a neutral llm powered conversation search and an opinionated llm that agrees with the uh, user's pre-existing stance will amplify this effect as we can see uh, by the shade of the color and uh, a dissonant LM, llm will not do much to mitigate this effect and this effect overall is what we call the generative echo chamber so now you might be wondering what is our future with these llms what does it look like if we don't do anything well let's find out okay wow this is a complicated uh, uh complicated diagram let's bin this and look at it step by step so something that we saw with web search which we didn't really appreciate as much was the democratization of the power of narrative but in LLM powered conversation search, we have sort of shifted back to the era where the power of narrative is going to be with the primary company providing the LLM and the applications that use that LLM. And then from a study, we observed that it was really easy to steer, uh, steer LLMs to exhibit certain bias. Uh, with the guardrails that OpenAI has, it should be very difficult, but it's surprisingly simple to do so, and no amount of guardrails can really prevent this mis misuse. We need to produce sophisticated methods and policies to uh, detect and prevent these types of manipulations. Next, uh, with these LLMs uh, being trained on web scale data where the majority opinion and languages are the most dominant, and these LLMs will again take these majority opinions and languages and, uh, and uh, sort of proliferate them. Uh, and again, due to conversational natures of these LLM powered conversational search systems, uh, we see that users uh, make queries that are more expressive and subjective. And uh, they express agreement in social, social uh, interactions with these LLMs. For instance, um, you can see that uh, there, these queries are, the, are actual queries that our participants used. Uh, in their search session and these exhibit the same uh, behavior and uh, next with LLMs being uh, you know with LLMs the conversations become highly personalized and the problem with highly personalized conversations is that the personalization can inadvertently create echo chambers isolating individuals within their own perspectives and potentially fracturing societal engagement Another issue parallel to proliferation of the dominant views is that until you subscribe to these applications uh, and conform to the majority views, opinions and languages said by these applications, you will be sort of left out. There is no space for my minority views and languages. So overall, it looks like we have taken a step forward, but three steps backwards. The generative echo chamber allows for personalization of uh, echo chambers as well as mass persuasion tactics by those in control of these LLMs. So is the future decided? Is this it? Well, of course not, but we have to ask. Where do we go from here? So firstly, we have to explore the role of LLMs in shaping public opinions. And as we have discussed, uh, and we also sort of have to discuss simple guard, we, as we have discussed that simple guardrails will not work, we need to develop methods to detect and prevent biases and manipulations by these uh, applications, along with establishing regulations to manage this misuse and ensure transparency. Finally, we need a deeper understanding of why, of the why and how of information seeking and conversational search, which you know, leads to the generative echo chambers that we are talking about. With that, um, I'll end my, end my talk and hopefully I've fill, filled you with uh, new questions to explore and potential solutions for the problem of generative echo chambers. Thank you.